This video is kindly sponsored by Project Red. Check the link in the description to find out more. This video is made possible by 3D Musketeers, offering full service product development, prototyping, and production, helping you make awesome from art to part. Links in the description. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Meet a Maker. This hello, hello. Today we are joined by co host Faye. <laughs> Welcome, Faye. Hello again. <laughs> And we are meeting Grant from 3D Musketeers. Hello, Grant. Hello, Grant. How you doing? How you doing? Good, good. How are you? I am so glad to be here. This is really exciting oh. for me and for, of course, for the company as well. And I, I, we've, you know, talked for many years and finally we get to record together. So I'm, I'm really excited for this. Me too. Me too. And you get to meet Faye, which is awesome. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, never met Faye happen. before. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will like each other. It's a double win. No, yeah. we're we're. I think we're already. I think we're already very much on the same wavelength. So I'm I'm super excited. Yay! <laughs> so shall we jump in? What? Let's do it. Yes. Yes. yes absolutely. Yes yes, yes. 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 So since since we're just meeting for the first time, I feel like it is very very appropriate for me to kind of ask you, who are you? What do you do? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a random person that doesn't matter. I, I mean, um, <laughs> my name's Grant. <laughs> I, I own 3D Musketeers. We are based in Tampa, Florida. Uh, I've been a maker for the past 12 years now, I guess. Started right around 2008. Uh, like heavy into 3D printing, at least. I've been kind of a tinkerer entirely too long. Uh, many horror stories of me taking things apart and putting them back together the wrong way with spare parts. <laughs> Those are for weight savings and aerodynamics and whatever anybody else oh. tells you is a lie. But <laughs> always been a geek my whole life and uh, ended up going to a business school. I got a phenomenal financial package from St. Leo University uh, here in Tampa and uh, graduated not once, but twice, because uh, if you're going to do it, let's do it. So I have a master's in business as well. Uh, but I, my goal in life is to always be an engineer. So I guess I play one. I'm a professional engineer, but not a PE, because that would be a totally different thing. Professional engineer, right? Huh, okay. I, I play one and get paid to do it. Um, so we, we employ people throughout the world at 3D Musketeers, and we serve to help take people's ideas to reality. So we are a company of makers slash professionals kind of just depends on the day and how upset the printers are uh, <laughs> that serves the maker style and business community, of course. So we work with a broad range of customers, everybody from the Smithsonian Institute to Snoop Dogg. Uh, so it has been a, an interesting <laughs> journey here. Yes. Both of those are customers. Um, can I, I can prove more about very what you've done? my Snoop Dogg <laughs> standing next to me. I can prove that. Show the Smithsonian. It. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you, you, you started I, I, down. I, I, I started you got to start path. with Snoop. Okay, yes. hold on. Here we go. Here this, we go. This is on you. You started it. He ah, ain't lying. That's amazing. It's Snoop Dogg. And that is a full color print. That is. So that's how I cut my teeth in this industry. We became... Uh, one of the greatest full color 3D printing companies in the world. We had people from all over coming to us. We've shipped well, parts then. to basically every country, but sandstone is a, well, it's a terrible process. Uh, if someone wants to buy a sandstone printer, hit me the heck up. Uh, they weigh <laughs> a thousand pounds. Um, and you know, they're a lot of fun, but compared to like an FDM or an MSLA printer, they can be a little problematic and they're dusty. Like your entire yeah. office will look like a scene of Scarface with how much white powder gets over things. <laughs> um, not Am that I, I would know that from experience. Sandstone is gypsum, aka plaster. It is. Yes, okay. it is. Okay. Yeah, okay. it is. Thank you. But it's for not. That. I actually it's, didn't know that. <laughs> it's not pure gypsum because if it was, gotcha. we would have we would have figured that out by now. Um, it is Ooh. 80 to 90% gypsum and the other 10 to 20% I have not to this day been able to replicate. And it is really that. frustrating because Aww. the powder is so expensive for those machines. It's Aww. 40 bucks a kilo or 40 bucks a pound when you buy it in. You can buy it by the kilo. I... No, <laughs> oh, no, okay. Okay. no, you buy it by the uh, 30 or 40 pound drum. 
So you're paying oh, 12 oh, okay. plus hundred dollars okay. for a bucket of powder. Dang. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, and, and again, that's a high end machine. Although I know some of the other guests that, that, that you've had on here, it's not anywhere near as high end as some of the ones uh, that you recently interviewed, but, um, or maybe are to, I, I don't know the schedule for this, yes. but it, it is considered a high end machine. Yeah, um, the uh, one you're talking about drops yeah. today, the day we are filming. So, um, cool. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm. I, I have told our whole crew about that episode. I am so excited to listen oh. to it. Metal 3D printing is just dope. Everything about it is so cool. We didn't uh, actually get am... to hear how much the uh, the in canal costs. So <laughs> we don't have it is of tens comparison. of thousands more. I don't know. It, it, Stupid is probably the right level. Um, stupid, <laughs> stupid expensive. Money. I know yeah. titanium used to be six hundred and forty dollars a pound cost, but that was when I was looking at metal three D printers many moons ago. I don't know. I don't know if it's gotten cheaper or more expensive. I, it could be a complete crapshoot these days. I imagine uh, it, it but, probably is somewhat based on like the market, like just the price it, it of is, and, and stuff like that. Which I've, I've had I've had the lovely opportunity of working in front of one for a little bit. Um, we have a couple of local companies that own them, and uh, they are always on my list of people to keep in my good graces. Uh, because if you ever need something, like I thought I was going to need something for someone in my personal family. Uh, oh, we thought someone was going to need a new knee. Uh, Oh. Because the doctors were just going to lop it off. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm in the 3D printing industry. This is not how we do things around here. Give me a... <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't need to call in those favors, so we're okay. Give me a month. Give me a month. I'll come up with a knee, you know? <laughs> I, I, I could get out. it in 48 hours. If I oh, needed God. it, I could get it in 48 hours. Nice. But, you seem uh, like a handy person to know. Yeah. I, I, I like to believe I have very good connections out there. I'm sure there are people that have better... But, uh, you know, my particular set of skills. because of what we do and who we work with, I can make phone calls and get people connected. A great example, there's a local board game cafe. We're going to be doing some minis for them because they have like mini painting classes that they do. It's like for D&D &D and Warhammer. Um, they just got their beer and wine license. Well, one of my oh. customers happens to own a brewery here in Tampa. So now he's got another distribution point and these people just got handed a, com a, a company to do their, their, their beer. So, uh, That's and it's cool. Tampa That's beer, awesome. so it works out. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the connector. <laughs> yeah. I, I come from a line of headhunters, oddly. So I, I'd like to believe I'm following in the footsteps of my late uncle. Um, <laughs> and that, that, that makes me a little proud at least. Right. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You That's mentioned awesome. the Smithsonian before, and we sort of like glossed over that as we saw yeah. Snoop Dogg. Well, but what did you do Snoop for Dogg. them? And also, what did you do? What was what was the model of Snoop Dogg for? How did that happen? Like as so much as was, you can it, say, it, obviously. <laughs> which one do you want first? Do you want Snoop uh, or you want let's Smithsonian? Let's finish Snoop Dogg and then move Smithsonian. <laughs> okay, so Snoop Snoop was from the BET Awards back in 2017 or 2016. Um, so he, one of our scanning clients was out there. Uh, and he decided he wanted to get scanned. At the time, Snoop was looking to produce his own line of marijuana. Surprise! <laughs> who would have thought? As uh, you do. That's, that's yeah. It's and the funny story about this is that is not the actual scan. Okay. The scan of Snoop Dogg is actually him throwing up a gang sign. And he didn't think I was going to know it. And I called him out on it and told them I'm changing it, I don't care because it's a liability. Not just for him, like it, it, his history is well known, but it's a liability for the, for the places that get these models because you don't want a rival gang shooting up a dispensary because your product is in it. So his, oh. his, his arms are like this, that's not how they were. There were things going on in his hands that are no longer going in on it. But that's a nice thing about 3D modeling. We can fake yep. basically anything that we want. <laughs> it's, you know, we, we've oh, scanned, I mean, we've scanned Drake, Drake's father, Black China, all the Kardashians, their children. Uh, it's <laughs> stories among stories. But yes, Snoop, this Your was for... sounds very interesting. <laughs> 
I own the digital rights to Justin Bieber because he never paid me. Huh. 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 You heard it here first, folks. People like, can get creative with that. <laughs> if you and we haven't the yet. Like Mr. Bieber, hit this guy up, you know? But like, see, here's the it. deal. He's got way more money than me. So if I do anything with it that he's not cool with, but uh, yes, Snoop oh, was a really cool customer. Um, you, you would think, but then again, it is Justin Bieber. Uh, and that's all we're going to go on that topic. I don't want to piss any lawyers off, but uh, Snoop was really great. You know, we, we called him and just kind of explained what was going on. And he said, okay, you're totally right. I understand. Can I get one of the originals just for myself? No problem. We can make that happen. So we sent him the original plus the one that's doctored a little bit. If you're not, you will not notice it on the, the sandstone because it's resolution wow. is a grain of powder, which is roughly 150 microns in diameter. So it's larger than you think, but it lends itself to that. You can take relatively low quality scans and get really pretty parts. Mm -hmm. Um, just now with HP coming out with full color, even though they still haven't gotten it right, HP figure, figure it out, please. Um, <laughs> it, it will slowly move away from the sandstone, but there is still great use of sandstone. Um, we reverse engineered the inks, so we've we've cut the price by 75% to make parts on them. Um, the Smithsonian was one of the few times where I've said, I don't believe you when somebody calls us. Um, <laughs> Hi, my name is so-and-so calling on behalf of the Smithsonian. We'd like you to do some 3D printing. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, I don't believe you. I'm going to need an email. She said, okay, I'll have one out to you in just a few seconds here if you don't mind staying on the phone to confirm. Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bluff amazing. was called. <laughs> it's it, it, That's it's wow. a good piece of humble pie, okay? And <laughs> yeah, we were yeah. incredibly humbled and to this day we are still the smithsonian's backup 3d printer the smithsonian utilizes uh sandstone gypsum printers for uh replication of artifacts right they don't want to put real artifacts on display because if little timmy for some reason runs into something and knocks over the three million year old skull that's a bit of a problem. If little Timmy knocks over the 3D printed replica that's been hand painted and looks identical, feels identical and weighs identical to the real one, then it's, you know, three or four hundred dollars, which little Timmy will have to open up a lemonade stand to cover. But it's better than irreplaceable. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Oh my god! And that, actually, that sounds like such good fun. Actually, like for some reason, to me, the the idea of creating like replica relics and stuff like that for the Smithsonian that sounds really fun. I have lots of Hamlet photos of myself holding skulls. Uh, it is in, it is I incredible feel. amounts of fun, especially when you have failure. So you're like, well this is going to be a salsa dish or something because it's completely useless to them and it's half a skull. Uh, but we, we worked on... Uh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I don't have them the anymore. They end up breaking. Is... <laughs> you, 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 you're, you're getting a little just the, the chip going into a skull and just kind of... <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. I had like flashbacks to like Indiana Jones and <laughs> basically, yes. And so th th this whole program they were doing and the cool thing is Adam Savage actually blew the NDA, which is even cooler for me because we were under an NDA for 10 years on this project. We were on it. We could say that we worked with them. We could not say about what. But Adam okay. Savage with tested toward the 3D printing lab at the Smithsonian and actually held one of the parts that we made. I know this because we made all of them. <laughs> so you're like, yes, we can talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. So now that it became public knowledge that fault. they were 3D printed, now, hey, we're clean and clear. We can talk about it. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, just one more level of geek cred for me. And I, I love all of our customers. Nobody, even Snoop Dogg, even Steve Aoki, another client, are unable to beat the Smithsonian. One, government credit card, baby. They said just work as hard as you want. You need to get this many done. We don't care how quickly you get them done. Just work as hard as you want. Here's a card, charge it whenever you feel comfortable for whatever amount you feel is is, is correct and just ship it out to us. Wow. I want 10,000 customers like that. 
Yeah, dream <laughs> clients, please. <laughs> dream clients. And, and, wow. and as a geek who grew up reading Smithsonian magazines and watching them on television, man, it, 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 it gives me chills to this day to say, damn, did I peak that early? <laughs> <laughs> like it though it's so it doesn't sound like this is this is anywhere near peaked this sounds like you're, you're still going so well let's this hope is... not <laughs> <laughs> with with oh the God. scanning did you do the scanning as well or did they do the scanning or did they have no someone no else they do the scanning they did all of the scanning yeah gotcha. i as much as i would have loved to have those kind of artifacts in my shop under no circumstances would i trust myself with them fair enough yeah because chances are I'm going to be the one that sneezes while carrying it. It drops. And then I have to decide how I break the news because I'm not, I'm not good at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm enough, sorry. I broke a one of a kind three million year old skull of Homo erectus that is completely irreplaceable. So oh, we're God. cool, but right? But I can print and you a right. new one. <laughs> Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that, thankfully. That, that I, we, sounds we, like a, uh, a movie plot right there. <laughs> we did have some police trouble with that. We got in trouble for uh, sending human remains through the post office uh, without a prior, like, decree. It's illegal to do that. And, of course, they x-ray packages. Well, unbeknownst to me, oh. sandstone is roughly oh. the same density as human bone. <laughs> So we got a visit, and it wasn't a great visit, but by the time everybody left, everybody was cool. And that's as much as I want to go into that story here's of meeting the printer. Postmaster General. We, yes, exactly. Like, here's my 3D printer, printer. And, and the things it can do. Yes, See, yes, they didn't really understand 3D printing. They no. thought it was some sort of drug operation, and I said I wish it was because we'd be a lot more profitable. <laughs> Oh God. I bet they walked like, away going, wow, sending... that's really interesting. They could 3D print things, though. Like, I reckon they probably why would I be sending the Smithsonian skulls made out of cocaine? <laughs> I, I, I just don't see that being... Anyways, it's, it's all though. taken care of, okay? I have no record. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All good. <laughs> Every day is different. I mean, and, and that's what we love so much about this industry that, you know... It, no matter what day it is, something different is coming through the door, whether they're trophies for a local startup week or it's a medical device that we're working on that I might oh. end up needing to use one day, which is even cooler. Uh, I, I'll have you know, Sonny, that I made this part. That'd be so cool while I'm on the operating table just to say that. That would be no amazing. one else is going to care, but I'll think it's cool. It's very cool. I think it's cool. <laughs> I mean, oh right God. now, and it's, it's of course, it's on the printer that's behind me that you can't see moving. Uh, we're printing parts for the Peloton bike. Uh, so we, we have a customer that does custom parts for that bike. And uh, he orders a lot from us. So I just, whenever we're not busy for some reason, I run those parts. Because uh, he will order them. <laughs> What's the Peloton bike? Can you tell us a bit more about that? It's an exercise bike, but it's nothing special. What is special about it is its interface and in that it has online capabilities where you can ride with friends and race them and that kind of thing. It, it's an cute. ecosystem. It They're $3,000 exercise bikes. And while I might be a small business owner, good freaking Lord, that's too expensive. <laughs> it is yeah. quite fun, though. I can see people wanting to race their friends and stuff, especially in you know COVID times. It's a, it's a good business idea for sure. <laughs> they had it. I mean, as soon as COVID hit, their stock went from here to here because it was they were guaranteed to make a ton of money. But at three grand a pop plus a monthly subscription fee, because Oy. you know that that's the way the world is going. You can't just buy things outright anymore. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. They they've got a pretty decent business model. Uh, but yeah, every day is different. I mean. Last month, we were doing hands for a Virgin Mary for a, a local church. What? Uh, this, Did she lose yep, her hands? <laughs> she was vandalized many years ago, oh. fell over, and both of her hands broke off. Oh. So a, lo uh, a gentleman in the congregation who was a woodcarver carved her new hands. But this is Florida, and this is coastal-ish Florida. The weather sucks. Sometimes there's salt. It's very hot and humid. None of yeah, those things work well for wood. So 
there. One of them is completely disintegrated. The other one was uh, on its way out. So we actually took photos of it and modeled it from scratch based on that. And I snuck out to that church like three or four times because there was not a snowball's chance that I was going to get caught trying to, you know, put a hand on this uh, on this Virgin Mary in front of the priest and some of the congregation. And it wasn't the right size. Told yeah. myself, uh-uh, nope, we, we need to be prepared. We need to make sure it's the right size. We cannot, those are risks I am unwilling to take. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Good, good. But, oh, uh, it, wow. Sorry. I'm super curious. Is it just <laughs> you doing all this? Or do you have a team of people working with you? We have a team. Locally, it's mostly me. We have uh, another local engineer that will pop in and pop out when he can. He is uh, was actually our first kind of contractor. That's the 1099 thing, independent contractor versus uh, actual employee here in the States. But um, he walked into our shop and we had a retail business and said, and, and I will quote, uh, my girlfriend works next door and he said, you guys do 3D printing. I made this. Do you need help? <laughs> His name is David. I love David to death. <laughs> we will have him on our podcast at some point. But uh, his voice is very, very known, very clear. Um, but he, he is an engineer. He He's actually sp a sponsored uh, player for uh, Project FDL. So he does Nerf. Oh, uh, cool. nerf blasters the fdl people are lovely yeah those nerf blasters are ridiculous yes they are <laughs> they i are did ridiculous. not appreciate it until i got um so we we were doing um virtual earth um the, but the after party and i was inviting a lot of people and i was like hey just pop your name on the list kind of thing and they popped themselves on and then um zach friedman um he was like so excited to me he's like oh my god i get to be on with them ah! and like in, in the comments and i was like i didn't quite get it until i was like on the stream and he was just like geeking out about their nerf blasters because they are insane it is <laughs> like, ridiculous yeah <laughs> we, we, we ambushed more than one person at my home with them and it is obtusely powerful accurate and predictable which is not anything that i would ever put at nerf blasters but that's one of david's yeah. big things he's crazy into it but of course because of covid he hasn't done anything with it in quite some time so he actually decided to go back and finish his engineering degree uh, most of our other uh people that we work with are scattered throughout north america so we have people in canada um, our lead engineer lives in hillsboro oregon i live near hillsboro florida so when oh. people ask where our engineers located, I just say Hillsboro, uh, Oregon. <laughs> and leave just enough of a gap. They're like, oh, cool. Oregon. Oh. oh Thankfully, yeah, nowadays, it, it's become commonplace to say that your people don't work at the same location. It's not needed anymore. So thanks, yeah. COVID. That's the one thing you've actually been beneficial. The rest of it, you can go straight to hell. Not a huge fan yeah. of you. No, it has kind yeah. of normalized having having people all over the place instead of just in an office. Yeah. Like, yeah. Our branding I guy, know. which I guess I can, I'll show off our new logo. We've never actually showed this off before. Oh, uh, our, our new logo was designed by our lead engineer's half brother who lives in nice. Montana. Our marketing Very team good. lives in Colorado and Montana. Yeah, so like, we, I do marketing for people in the States too. Like, it's just like a thing now, you know? Like, it's like, yeah, yeah it's fine. We don't need to be in the same room. <laughs> we got <Yep>. this. <laughs> we we have writers overseas. We have one in Australia. Uh, we have a couple in the Philippines uh, and one in India that take our podcasts and turn them into articles, which are not posted on our website because we are redoing it because our marketing, well, it sucks. Um, it wasn't great because I am I, I don't like marketing. I don't like social media. I'm not good at any of it. I don't like talking it's about hard. stuff. We just got to get hard. you on it camera is. more because when you talk, it's pretty awesome. Like this is very enjoyable. <laughs> you are and see, topic. that's what I say. That's why we got. That's why we started a podcast. My dad always said I had a face for radio, so at least I got to put it <laughs> oh, to use, right? That's oh. not true for anyone listening to oh. this. Grant is very pretty. <laughs> my, my, 
my, my dad my dad means well my dad is the reason the company is called 3d musketeers it was completely his idea and he always anytime we talk about the name he always wants credit for it <laughs> yeah, that's that awesome. was me yep dr posner yes that was him it was dr posner that came up with it i gave away my last name oh well it's public knowledge i don't care uh <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. We won't tell anyone. We can't always edit Everyone. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just between us girls. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you're, you're good. Don't. You uh, it, it, in the state of Florida, all corporate filings are public, so you can look up 3D Musketeers and find all that information. So I'm not too concerned. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it, th this journey of being a maker has been really interesting. You know, I, I'm heavy into electronics. I love, love building circuits. Um, I don't actually know how to design circuits, which is odd i never learned because that's something you learn in college i didn't go to I didn't electrical college, engineering but... school <laughs> i went to college just business school so i can do great business plans i can raise money i'm great at fundraising so yes hello my name is grant and i used to do grant writing <laughs> <sighs> you want to know a great way to break ice that's how you break ice great way to break ice when you're that trying to raise amazing. money you and a good way for comedy, people to remember right? your name <laughs> uh, what did you say Faye? I said, so you minored in comedy, yeah? <laughs> oh, no, no, that's that just comes from long, sleepless nights of being an entrepreneur. If you can't laugh at yourself, you're not going to be able to laugh at anything, right? You got to laugh at yourself. <laughs> this, is this is true. This is true. Where did your maker journey start? Like, what have you always made or how did you get into it? Or yeah. So um, I, I guess my, my story is a little odd of becoming a maker because I've been a maker for as long as I can remember. I was born and raised on colleges. My father went to college and never left. He loved working inside of colleges during, uh, with the administration and doing administrative stuff. So he actually currently is the Associate Vice President of Student Services at St. Leo University, hence the ability to get a great financial package there. Thanks, Dad. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, he oversees everything that involves students. So he went to school and never left. So I was born on Hollins College in Virginia. I grew up on Rollins College in Orlando. And so I had access to college level stuff. Like when Rollins got internet, they had a T1 line. That T1 line ran through my living room. So I had what? T1 internet growing up. So and you so lived the, the, on campus, like, you like- Yeah, we lived wow. in what was a frat house. Wow. Uh, and it was, oh. it, it was a duplex. It was converted to be a single family home. It was a home built in the 20s. So it had oh, a wow. basement, which is interesting because most basements in Florida are just called in-ground pools. <laughs> uh, because the water table, you, if you dig a hole, anything deeper than about a foot in Florida, it's gonna fill with water. Yeah, swamp because there's, there's water that close to you. Um, yep. But the house was built in the 20s, so uh, it was really interesting growing up on a college. So I didn't have your traditional uh, friends, and I, I don't know. I was the geeky kid in school, so naturally, being 30 years old, I'm 30 currently as of recording this. Um, oh. Being a geek was not cool back then, yep. so you got kind of shunned for it, yep. and so I. <laughs> fell into hobbies of what could I do that was interesting. We would, you know, soup up super soakers and uh, generally wage war with the frat house that was next door. And it was kind most of the time. Every now and then it got a little excessive, but that's okay. Uh, but it, it was always finding ways to take what we had and make it a little bit better, a little bit faster, a little bit cooler, and somehow have spare parts when you were done. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that's an ongoing problem for me. Oh, uh, like I have like I have little like M3 bolts and nuts on my desk that I am sure went to a project. Don't know what. <laughs> but you need one of it's those not like, broken, like, so it definitely doesn't need all it. the steps, one, two, three, and you just like put the screws in the steps. Have you seen? <laughs> yes, I have. I have. <laughs> I only recently cleaned my desk and I would say that I cleaned it, but it's still pretty messy. Uh, every now and then you just kind of build up projects, then like two or three of them go away. And it's like, oh, okay, we can purge. We can purge. Yep. Get the trash can. We can purge. Yep. <laughs> yes, I, I've, got, I've got like I, product development stuff that we're working on. This is patented. I can show this. It's fine. Um, <laughs> you know, stuff like this or 
thermo uh, thermochromic trophies that we oh, designed for somebody. That's uh, so it goes cool. from uh, or it should be dark orange, but it is currently well, it's in it's in Fahrenheit, so I'm sorry, but it's 85 degrees in my office right now. That's like oh, that's warm. can you convert? Uh, Prusa says 30 C. Uh, yeah. Oh, 30 C. Oh, yeah, oh. Just gonna isn't it meant to be cold for you now? It, it goes uh, it goes yellow when it gets hot, so oh, it's. It's a generic Amazon filming, but it's a really cool trophy that we made for uh, Tampa Bay Startup Week, which interestingly, I won a trophy for that. So I have to make myself a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But uh, I, I've been a maker my whole damn life. I, I, I don't remember what was the impetus. I know what really got it moving. And, and I'm going to call mm. out someone special, uh, John Winchester. He was my uh, physics professor, sophomore uh, sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school. Uh, John Winchester was a former NASA aeronautical engineer who, at the age of 55, decided to climb Mount Fuji. And at the peak of Mount Fuji, decided he was bored with his life, quit his job, and decided to become a public school teacher. This was the gentleman wow. that rode a Harley to school and decided he didn't want to park it outside. So he just drove it into the classroom. And that was his thing. <laughs> <laughs> he had a problem with authority, so he, he made him a phenomenal teacher, but really bad as an employee. Do things his way. Uh, but he he would come to us, you know, the kids that sat in the front of the class, asked too many damn questions, never shut the hell up, guilty as charged, and said, how can I help you? Never had someone asked, what do you want to do? How can I help you? And I was big and still am big into alternative energy and how we can harness it as a country, as a globe to reduce our necessity on fossil fuels with him. We built our first hybrid, our first fully electric and first hydrogen powered vehicles. Um, none of them were any way, shape school. or form safe. What? <laughs> yeah. This was the kind of guy that, if this was to happen now, he would probably be investigated for like being accused oh. of diddling children, but he's not. He was literally no, just trying to amazing. motivate people. Nowadays, you can't motivate kids because it, it looks at people just being weird. I don't get it. But uh, he he is the impetus that drew me to continue my uh, th this step in becoming a nerd, becoming a maker. 3D printing wasn't around. I graduated high school in 2008. That is right when RepRap started. Mm. So we didn't have 3D printers. We went out to local metal shops and begged them for scraps. And I brought a lot of my tools, which were a lot of times my dad's tools that I had amassed over the years in the trunk of my car, which I still own and still drive that old Honda. I love <laughs> that old Honda. It's old oh, enough wow. to vote this year. And no, that has oh. nothing to do with election fraud. Uh, <laughs> it turned 18 this year. Um, I still, I have so many weird memories in that car, but John Winchester was truly kind of the guy that really pushed me to do more. The one that got me really interested in electric vehicles to build them myself, to race them, um, you know, to be involved in big projects. He pushed me towards Tesla coils and high voltage. Like I built my own Tesla coils and, uh, so making is just kind of in my blood and the business side says whoa 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 wait a minute people like this kind of stuff now you're no longer an outcast being a geek being a maker is cool and that yeah. means you can make a profit off of it <laughs> <laughs> lo and behold eh, eh. <laughs> I mean, we're surviving least, you're not this year. Beat up anymore, you know, no one's no, beat well, up anymore. I, I, I look, so. I, I, I feel, I, I feel like a, a, a bad Chris Brown joke right now, uh, with with how bad COVID's hurt us. Um, um, so it's where we will survive. There's a lot of companies out there that won't. Um, you know, and anyone out there that's listening to this and struggling to make it through, keep pushing just keep pushing unless your idea truly sucks make sure it doesn't suck <laughs> uh but it, it, if it does it, if it one. is doing good and you are profitable just keep pushing you'll get through it you know it, it's it, it's like they tell the moms in labor keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing you'll know you'll know <laughs> <laughs> well said you're, you're very lucky though to have had such a to have such an involved teacher it i i i know yeah. as well what it's like to have 
like the difference that having a teacher that like especially at such a formative time as high school having a teacher that really genuinely cares and wants you to learn and grow and thrive really is a, yeah. is a huge difference mm -hmm. so you're very lucky he sounds I really would... cool and I'm just like yeah. oh man yeah I can totally imagine being there in that classroom being like yeah that would have been my favorite teacher I was gonna say similar there's so much to be said for having like a cool influence during that time in your life like um, the true influencers, yeah. the ones yeah. that should get paid but don't, teachers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, yes. been, I've been thinking God. about this a lot lately because like, oh no, I won't go on that tangent. But like, yeah, there's something to be said for having a really cool person in in in, in, in fields and like letting I them be their true I think every big cool maker self. can track it back. I yeah. truly <laughs> believe every one of us can track it back to somebody influential in our lives that gave us that initial kick in the ass to get moving and do something. Every one of us. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're 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 so absolutely right. But so okay, I'm like I'm sitting here and I'm kind of like piecing the pieces the I'm piecing the pieces and putting the pieces of Grant together. And there's also some very funny and interesting unrelated stories in there too. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, unfortunately. But, I tangent too much. <laughs> no, no, it's quite all right. Um I want to know some of your favorite kind of like skills that you've picked up along. Like we've definitely gotten to hear a little bit of like who's who's influenced you and who's inspired you. But what what's some of your favorite things that you've kind of like learned how to do? Oddly, <laughs> it's not making; it's talking to people. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. There, there are so many makers out there that are incredibly brilliant but cannot hold a conversation to save their life. Generally, I call them engineers. By and large, I'm not wrong. It's unfortunate, but charismatic engineers are, uh, they're, they're unicorns, right? They're very difficult to find. And if you are a charismatic engineer, 3D Musketeers is hiring. Please reach out. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, we need more of you. Awesome. Um, but I, I, I think it's the ability to have a conversation and bridge that gap between engineers and business owners, because I'm a little bit of both, right? I'm more business owner than engineer, but I can run Fusion 360-ish. I may not do it the right way, but I get to the same end, end spot. And that's really all that matters. If you do all the math wrong, but you still get the right answer, does it really matter that you did it wrong? This is what my parents had to tell my year five maths teacher. <laughs> <laughs> she gets the she right, right answer. answer. Gets Why does it matter if she can't tell you how she got there? <laughs> I yep. couldn't agree yep. more with any of this. Couldn't agree more. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I love making though. I mean, it, 3D printing is just amazing. Uh, this year has been a little bit odd for a lot of people, right? We, we, have, we had our first public event yesterday. Well, Saturday, Sunday, today's Monday for me. I guess it's Tuesday for Billy Faye. Is it still Monday for you? <laughs> still Monday for me, still Monday. Okay. Just late Monday. Okay, late Monday. Yeah, it's midday Monday for me, but uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday, we had our first public event and it was weird, right? But there's only a few people that showed up. That's okay. I told myself if we go there, we hand out a couple of business cards and, you know, they're weird. They're made of wood. We have a laser. So make your own damn business so cards. So am I. Obviously. Um, yeah, clearly. Uh, if, if we can impact one person's life so that they leave with a better understanding of 3D printing than when they came in, then that entire time of taking that big stupid TAS-6 down, lugging it across town, setting it back up, calibrating it, because of course it's not a Prusa, so it needs just assistance constantly. Oh. Uh, but it, it makes all the right noises. Prusas are too quiet. People don't <laughs> notice them because they're so darn quiet. The TAS is incredibly quiet. loud. <laughs> I never thought of that. It makes sense. We take the TAS it's because it's really <laughs> loud. Yeah, it's like, look at me, oh, I'm a 3D printer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every now I and then I just have to too. check on this one to make sure it's still running, because I can't, I can't tell. Unless I hear it moving, I don't hear that it's printing the Taz. <laughs> it sounds like a pissed off cat. Um, and like, I should be running it right now. We have jobs that we need to run on it, but it's so loud, it ruins audio. Oh, no. It sounds like someone's beating a dog in the background, and I don't need those comments. Uh, <laughs> This is true. This is hard true. pass on that. <laughs> what? Yeah, hard I, pass. I, I, had to pause, I had to pause my print because I think it was it's just a little, a little, a little too loud. <laughs> I, 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 I don't mind a little bit of print noise. It's quiet. It, 
it just proves that, you know, we're, we're not fake. Like, of course, when I go on Zoom meetings with people there, one, they don't always expect me to be young. Um, and they definitely don't expect this background. They don't expect it to be real. This is absolutely real. Now, it's I guess awesome on, on a podcast like this, that's not unusual, right? To have 3D printers, like one that uses a belt. I see it back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, that's not unusual. It's not unusual. Oh. Uh, it is unusual, though, when you're in normal meetings. Yes. Right. So I was talking to a patent attorney this morning. And he's like, I saw your background. I thought it was fake. What the <laughs> hell is going on back there? I'm like, well, like, this is what, this I is could what tell I you, do. but we're going to run over our time. <laughs> yeah. right. So let me say, call you. When... Oh, sorry. No, you go. <laughs> no, no, finish. When, when, when working from home started, I still had my old job. And yeah, I'd be in meetings about stuff and people would be like, where are we? And I'm like, oh, this is my craft room. That's my 3D printer. And everyone's like, what's a 3D printer? And I'm like, oh, we are not getting any work done. <laughs> yep, yep. It's, yeah. I mean, we had, you know, we, we had people from all walks of life, all races, ages come in, take a look at it. And by and large, they're all like, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so you you and you're a prototyping service, right? Like you. Yeah, help yeah. So we're so a service you, bureau. We go from art to part. Gotcha. How do you take people on that journey from maybe not even knowing what three D printing really is to a fin? Like, surely you have to train people along the way, like bring them along. Oh is yeah. That, yeah. The, what's that workflow like? The machines sell themselves. Once they know how it works, <laughs> I don't have to do anything, right? It, it, what they do and what they're capable of, it, once you understand that it is just a hot glue gun duct tape to an Etch-A-Sketch ran by an Arduino, once you understand that, everything else is easy about these things. <laughs> and a lot of times I can tell that to people and they just like, well, what do you, what do you mean? Look, just why don't we just hop on a Zoom meeting and I'll just you know, bring my camera over, I'll log in with my cell phone, I'll show them some video. Whoa, you're right. Like I would lie to you. Like I would <laughs> lie to you. But no, like 85% of the sales cycle for us is just pure education. That is why we are building the Making Awesome Academy or the Making Awesome Institute. I haven't figured out the name. I own all the domains, so back off domain people. <laughs> I uh, like Academy for what it's worth. <laughs> I yeah. like Academy too. Uh, Institute is more professional, but then I think of like a mental institute. Yeah. And I guess if you are an dry. inventor, maybe yeah. you need that too. You could do a well, like, yeah. <laughs> No, Academy is better. <laughs> yeah, Academy we, certainly gives a, a good a good idea of learning, I think. It's we went with Academy and Institute but... because they're both top level domains. So we have makingawesome.academy and makingawesome.institute, as well as makingawesomeacademy.com, makingawesomeinstitute.com, because and you thought ahead. people are jerks. Um, yep. And yeah, but uh, it, it, we're building this learning management system so that we can teach people because I go through these same calls every single day. And if we're going through it every single day, we can create a class structure. We'll have free classes. Right. So if you want to get just like a low level understanding, understand what a 3D printer does, how it can help you. Great. You can watch that 10 minute video. But if you want to watch the three hour long video about how 3D printing works, why it works, why it can help you and, and all that, that will be behind a paywall because I'm a business. At the end of the day, there are bills to pay. I just got a nine hundred dollar bill for graphic design and that's for the first half of December. OK, I got bills to pay, damn it. <laughs> Mouths to feed. And 900 bucks for graphic Filament design to buy. That bad, so. <laughs> yeah. No, for the graphic design work that we got, it is incredibly affordable. And it's being done in the U.S. Uh, there are very few things that we outsource outside of the United States. Like the, the, the Philippines, oddly, I got a buddy who his whole family is from the Philippines. So I'm working through him to get to get writers. So they're family of his. It's not like we, you know, it's not just found randos. bottom of the barrel. Yeah, it's not randos. These are all people that we know. I can barely communicate with them because the time zone is tough. It's exactly 12 hours off, um, mm. you know, and their English, of course, is not great. But all they have to do is listen to the podcast and create an article out of it. But, uh, you know, we we like to believe that, you know, we use USA made materials whenever we can. We you, we have USA made 3D printers like the Fusion 3 F410 of which we are a reseller for. Uh, but if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not looking at spending five grand on a 3D printer. But if you are, hit me up. 
Uh, you never know. Yeah. Hey, shameless know. plugs. I got to do them where I can, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't I mean, ask I, if it was I, okay. I it. <laughs> hey, I didn't ask if it was okay. My dad's always said it's easier to ask for or for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> No, I mean, I want people to show up who they are and what they do. So, you yeah, know. <laughs> I feel like I feel like a, a large purpose, not necessarily the sole purpose, but a large purpose of this is to give people a, a bit of a stage to another talk platform about stuff yeah. and to yeah. show off. And, and that includes plugging yourself. So, oh, yeah. like, yep. plug away. <laughs> yep. So the, the, the 3D Musketeer side, that is the service bureau side of the business. That's CAD. That's patenting, 3D printing, laser cutting, CNC milling, marketing, branding. And we're doing all of this for our customers, right? Wow. It's literally art to part, everything inside of our uh, like of our domain. Yeah. And if you need to do injection molding, we got local people that we pass it off to because I don't have that kind of money or space. My <laughs> entire office is 170 square feet. Don't big, know what that big, is. Big, big, big relate. <laughs> Ten big by relate. seventeen feet. Uh, I guess that doesn't help you either, Billy. Uh, like three by five meters. Oh, that's not much bigger than this room. Wow. Yeah, and wow. there are eighteen three D printers in here. Some of which you cannot see. Some of which are on the floor you're, you're and come up on two past my right waist. Now. Like, you're better at organizing uh, you, well, than I am. <laughs> no, I am not. I am very, very <laughs> clearly have left out I this fit desk area. <laughs> I'm trying to think of where the, I the camera is set up in a way that you see what I want you to see and not much else. <laughs> I'm, I'm still imagining that you've, you've got the uh, you've got your computer on a 3D printer and you're sitting on a 3D printer <laughs> and like there's at least like you've got your feet up on a 3D printer like it's just basically all 3D printers and you just have all to fit yourself into the space <laughs> around them. That's how I'm imagining. I, I am looking at adding more shelves in here. Uh, so maybe, I mean, we have four Prusa minis coming, but it's probably the shelf that's got all of our resin stuff on it. That's probably going to go away. I might be moving the resin printers next to me on a shelf. It's it, it and all of which I'm going to make, right? I'm a classically trained woodworker, so uh, I could oh, print it, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll do it with a chop saw in 10 minutes instead of waiting 10 hours on a 3d printer. I love 3d printing, but Amazon it's has made it to everything. No, it's not. And like I had a guy come in yesterday who owns an axe throwing business that wanted to 3D print axe handles. I'm like, you are someone that is looking for a solution that doesn't have an actual problem. Yeah. And 3D printing is not the solution for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's very well said. Yeah. That's very yeah. well said. It, it's it's very common, you know, that we get questions. Oh, well, I, I want to 3D print this. Okay. How much do you want to spend? I don't know, $10. So you want me to design something from scratch for you with no with no nothing, test fit it, likely do more than one or two prints that will take multiple hours a piece for ten dollars? Well, well, yeah, no. <laughs> it's not how any of this works. No, no, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> well, I can get it on Fiverr. Okay, then do it. Do it. Yeah, but I'd rather support a local business. <laughs> Yeah, I hate I, that. I'd rather support a local business thing. When I was sewing, people would give me like repair jobs and they're like, oh, can you do this? I'll give you 10 bucks or whatever to repair it. And number one, I hate repairing. Like it is the worst, the worst job when you're sewing and like altering stuff. It's like, cause you really should be altering the pattern. That's where it should be altered, not the final yep. garment. And it's just so annoying. And yeah, they're, they're like, oh, I want to support a local business and pay you fucking nothing. You're, you're, and it's like, you're not, uh, no. That is not supporting like, a local no. business. Yeah, if you want to support me, pay me business. well. Or like, you know, ask me before you dump it in my lap. Yeah. <laughs> and like, don't get me wrong. We will do charity work all the time. I think the big one that we can bring yeah, up is, ah, is hope. So yeah, cute. exactly. Char <laughs> charity is different. Charity's you know, I mean, I know Billy, Hope. you know Hope. Faye, do you know Hope? I Hope is Brad's dog. Do you know Brad? Oh, yes. I know Brad. I know Brad. Uh, so we know. did this. My company did this. Oh, that's awesome. We made Hope. Um, Brad actually lives like 25 minutes from me. He was a student of mine uh, when I was a robotics teacher at Academy at the Lakes. Uh, they didn't bring me on this year because of COVID, I assume. I thought I did a good job last year. I mean, the checks cleared so i assume COVID. i did a good job yes, <laughs> but uh you know make a wish reached out and said hey this kid wants to do 3d printing i'm looking like oh it's brad yeah let's do it <laughs> and uh oh. yeah our, our job of it was to take pictures of his dog hope 
and turn it into a model. This is some of the filament that Brad got, but it was three millimeters, so I made it on the Taz. Brad also has one that we made uh, with the Moore Struder, which is a 1.2 millimeter diameter nozzle that does one millimeter thick layers. So it's Whoa. a thick boy. It's uh, chunky. Uh, it's a 200 millimeter tall dog that weighs a pound and a half. So it weighs almost it. two kilos. <laughs> wow! Oh, I love it. He's a good chunky boy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, and. I, I gave when I gave it to Brad. I said I'm not taking off the support support material when it's that thick. Sucks to take off. I said I will do this for you, and I'm not going to charge you for it. But you're taking off the support. You need to learn how much it can suck. Because I it, we have provided Brad with lesson. all the profiles that we use here. And um, if you listen or watch episode ten of Making Awesome, uh, we had Brad on. Uh, I apologize if you watch it because the audio is really, really low. I had not figured out that on Streamlabs OBS, I need to just crank it to a hundred and not and not look at their little slider bar. But um, he talked about his entire journey through cancer and surviving it. He's on the up and up now. Talked about Make a Wish. We didn't didn't talk about the dog. There's a story to the dropped it got it uh <laughs> there's a story to the dog his mom has told me but i'm gonna have him tell it the next time we have him on as a guest uh oh, we're gonna have brad on routinely as a guest so i'm excited for that actually oh. i got off talking with brad to come on and hang out with you all we, we oh. he's uh working he's learning how to solder so it, it's really fun to, to take him through that process brad's 15 and he's learning all this so to me that's like one of the most the You're the coolest job. job will forever be the smithsonian the most rewarding job has been working with brad because when i first met yeah. brad it was because he was a student he had an ender three and needless to say he didn't have an ender three for very long it it, it just i said brad go get a prusa stop it just spend the money get a prusa <laughs> and uh he got one and he's never looked back and you know it, it's fun to see him go from someone who's kind of freaking out worried about how to do something to hey i've got this problem this is my solution what do you think and now it's hey look at what i did i'm like oh, oh. they grow up so fast <laughs> <laughs> that's so beautiful oh, so i, 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 I want to pay it forward teacher. You're his it, that's exactly what I was saying. I want to be the Mr. Winchester. Yeah. Because he, he always calls me Mr. Posner, which I laugh. I'm like, Brad, you call me Mr. Posner when I'm at the school. I'm here <laughs> at your house hanging out with you. And we're we're just talking shop and we're soldering and we're Making working on your tool changer. You can call me Grant. You, <laughs> if you call anyone by Posner, it's my father. And you call him Dr. Posner just to upset him because he does have his PhD, but he doesn't use it. But... um. <laughs> My dad promised my my grandmother that one of her kids would marry a doctor. None of them did, and my father's always taught me that my word is worth more than my dollar. So at near sixty, my father got his PhD. So oh, there, there, there's your. Really I, 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 I I had a, I've, I've had a great family. I've been blessed by that, and you know my family really does support a lot of what we do here, um, financially to some extent. Um, you know they they help me out uh, initially when we were building the business. I've repaid them. Um, you know, but it, it's to have a support system is something that a lot of entrepreneurs and even makers don't have. And uh, thankfully, now that we have a Billy's Discord, so here, look, Billy, I'll help you. you dro name drop your Discord. You can throw <laughs> that in the comments now. You can put it in the description. Hell see? yeah! Right, it's right in there. the description <laughs> down somewhere. All right. Well, see, I'm bad at these kind of. No, things. no, no. But, but uh, like it, yes, because it's a good place, and I like hanging out with people. <laughs> <laughs> Billy's Discord is awesome to come, and if you if you have questions, you can ask friends of Billy Rubin, and, and you know, it's it's awesome to see this community come together. Whether we are coming together over mutual disdain for an individual, or coming together in absolute love for making. I mean, every month we try to find a charity project that we can do where we don't charge. Uh, I believe people over profit a lot of times. Um, Unfortunately, that's not always the best mantra, but uh, it's something near and dear to me. Uh, we have a foster home locally that all the kids are into among us. And I, I know, Billy, we talked about this a little bit. Um, we're going to be 3D printing like 40 little Among Us characters in various colors. Ah. We were going to try to do like a, a live Twitch stream with them, but I neglected to remember that these kids are in foster care. And it's basically wit uh, witness protection for children. Ah. Uh, so we can't do that because that would be violating some of the terms of their agreements. But um, 
you know, we're still going to give it, we're going to still give stuff to them. Oh yeah. Make a wish has been the last few months. Cause that was a multi-month process. And, um, you know, so it, it's, it's fun. Being a maker is something that I wouldn't trade for anything. Uh, I mean, it would be great to make a bunch of money doing it. <laughs> but, you know, that is the yeah. dream. That is the dream. Yeah. <laughs> it would be we are net profitable for the year. Doing nice things for people. Like. <laughs> right, right. It, we are net profitable. And I know that's a lot more than a lot of companies can say, especially right now. So we are absolutely blessed. And it, it's it's hard work, dedication, blood, sweat, tears, and the right team. And it is 99% them and 1% me. Without, without me, the company wouldn't exist. But without them, the company would continue to fail. And so that's, it, it is the team that makes the business. It's not the business owner. Um, now I am not, and like I said. This is too good. No, <laughs> it's not, you're, no. you're, all, everything you say is just like, is just so perfectly well worded. I'm, I thought this you'd is, like this it. This is how right? I feel. No. <laughs> I, I, I would forget where I put it, okay? Like, <laughs> this is just my checklist from the last two days. I can't let it focus oh, too geez. much because there are things on there that people can't read. But uh, <laughs> we didn't get it. I, it was I, blurry. No, none yeah. of this is scripted. <laughs> Billy only sent me the questions that you guys wanted to ask 20 minutes before yep. we started the dang yep. recording. That was my <laughs> bad. I was, I was like going to bed and I was already like really late to bed. And I was like, oh, I didn't send the question. <laughs> I don't, oh, no. Billy, you, you've listened and to I'm me like, talk on more than one occasion. <laughs> I think you should have known that we are not going to hit at least half of those. Yeah, I kind of figured you'd be fine. Because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you're good. You're good you're, at the talking. You got it covered. You're all, and it's like, all I don't care the medium. I like talking over the phone. I like talking uh, over Zoom, over Discord. And that's why we started our podcast. I found that my lead engineer and I, we are, he is one of my best friends. When and if I ever get married, hopefully when, not if, uh, he will be on the wedding party. And oddly, I have never met this man in my life. We we know each other just back and forth. But there were times where we had an emergency project. He was flying back to Montana from Colorado before he moved out to Oregon. He was visiting family in Colorado. I said, hey, I need you as soon as you get home. He said, it's going to be late, but okay. His flight was delayed three and a half hours. He got home at two o'clock in the morning, my time. We worked until 9.30 in the morning. We got the parts on the printer and we delivered it on time, damn it. <laughs> but in that time between 2 a.m. and 9.30 in the morning, we learned about each other's lives. I learned everything about him. I, I, we are, I know things about him that most people would never know. He knows things about me that most people don't know. We are friends and you don't need to be next to the person to be friends. And I love yeah. that. So I said, I what mean, the hell? We should start recording. We know this. We know yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, both of you I have been awesome friends with and I have, I've never hugged you in real life, which is actually really sad. But, oh, <laughs> but like you you're some of my best friends and like I, I feel like I have lots of people like that and yeah I feel so blessed that we live in no, the I, age I think, of I the internet where that can be a thing <laughs> get this we get this better than most people I think mm. it, it, it's true definitely I mean we are literally on opposite ends of the world the the, the current connection is traveling well north of 5,000 miles or whatever that is in kilometers uh, it, it's traveling a shitload of a distance for the three of us to come together and talk i think i'm in the middle you're in the middle yes because phase in the yeah UK, I, 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 and i'm in the yeah Australia. okay so i'm quite literally like, in the middle i think it's almost five it's almost five thousand miles just between the two of us because i building have flown, castles in the I, <laughs> I i've flown to the u.s many times i know approximately how many miles it is like so yeah so like between the three of us it's way more than yeah, and and that's what that. makes this so cool. And you know, it, it, we talk so much, Tad and I. Tad is our lead engineer. That I said, Tad, I've always wanted to have a podcast, and I've never had a reason to do it. I never shut the hell up. So I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy you a mic. I'm gonna send you a mic. I'm gonna tell you to go buy lighting, and I'm gonna show you how to build it. I'm gonna have you put it on the company credit card. Uh, you're gonna get a nice camera. I'm gonna send it to you, and what the hell we're just gonna go for it 
And we did. And so we have the Making Awesome Podcast. Do not search for Making Awesome Podcast. You will not find it. The name is terrible. We will put because it if you in search the description. For, <laughs> if, if you look for Making Awesome Podcast, you find videos on how to make an awesome podcast. If you search uh, for 3D oh, Musketeers, no. you'll find it. Oh, so, no. uh, Watch out. But your, like your, Billy... Your SEO is so good, it came out the other side and went... <laughs> I wasn't worried about SEO. <laughs> right that yes but for what we do you know we 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 talk about inventing we talk about product development we talk about all those things it's all about making awesome and from day one since the taz has a it, it's got that multi-level programmable arduino screen um instead of saying you know taz printing we always had it say making awesome so it's always been like that term that we use internally for what we do because no matter what it is it's awesome it, of course it's black and it's in uh, a, a shadow, but there are parts for someone to hold a Mac Mini. It, it, it's it, it's weird to me, but I'm an I'm a, I'm a Windows guy, so whatever. But th it's worth it to that person, and that is awesome to them because it allows them to stack their Mac Minis because people have multiples apparently, uh, stack them and take up less space, have adequate airflow, and that's a cool piece for them because up until now that's been unattainable. Mm. So that's awesome. So everything yeah. we do is awesome, but it's not awesome to, you know, the random Joe blow off the street. It's awesome to other makers because we understand what it took to get there, but it's not, uh, it, 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 it's awesome to us. It's an internal awesome. And, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to bring on more guests. We had Brad, uh, we had Thomas. Thomas is our, now our branding guy. There are three episodes with Thomas where Thomas, tells us how bad our branding actually is <laughs> we, no seriously it's three really great episodes he's like god your branding sucks from the day that thomas came on the podcast i have to start marking them explicit because thomas cusses like a sailor and and i do too but i do my best to like you know uh you know use the words i use around my mother uh it, when we record because I want kids to be able to listen to it, but I guess we've thrown that out the window. And besides, if kids listen to any modern music, they're hearing it anyways. Uh, but at least I mean, we use it to you effect. When I started swearing, you know? <laughs> I, I was pretty young when I started swearing. Yeah. I, I, I was Australia. probably younger than I should have been. <laughs> I think we all were, though. I think that's the thing. Is that we're all, I, Now that we're adults, like the, you, you have this compulsion to protect kids from swearing, and it's like, uh, but I was like 12. <laughs> uh, but, but Billy's Australian. I don't know how that works over there because you, you guys, you guys cuss a lot. <laughs> so I am learning that some swear words are swear words that I didn't know. Like, damn, didn't know that was a swear word. <laughs> it's not I was really educated the other day. <laughs> not but the yeah. c word though. Y'all use that like it's like it's going out of style here in America. You say that to Same someone, word. there's a fist fight coming. It's contextual. There's a fist fight. It's contextual, but of course it is. I but worked... unless you have an Aussie accent, it don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on I worked on a construction site for a while. Um, yeah, which I think is the main reason why I sweat. Like I swore at school because there was you know I was attempting to be cool. I was never cool, um, but I tried. <laughs> I mean, we're all <laughs> makers. But I didn't None swear of us much were cool. At home. Yeah. I didn't swear much at home because my par my parents, my dad really was very particular about how I spoke. Um, so I had this almost British accent growing up. But yeah. Um, yeah. That's why you have to be so careful around Brad. Anytime Brad's on, I'm like, Thomas, get it all out now. I, I will take Brad out of the call for five seconds. Just drop all the F-bombs and now we can bring yeah, Brad back. Get him out. Get him out. Uh, it just happens. I mean, he's 15. Yeah. He's, but, again, uh, he's it, probably swearing. Oh, yeah, he like, is. He's absolutely like, swearing. Yeah. <laughs> his mom tells but me he's, I, not swearing, it, he's not swearing around us and we're not swearing around him we have some you know we some, attempt some sort to be respectful yes agreement you don't swear <laughs> on each other me, until you're like 18 it, it, it's the kids that are the future here right not only because they're going to be voters and in the united states we all saw the power of voting or whatever the hell we call it now in the united states <laughs> uh and whatever the hell is going to come out of it because it still isn't figured out because america uh, but we saw the power of what happens to motivated people that get out to the polls, no matter what side you were on. And I firmly believe that if we are not empowering our youth to think outside the box and look at look at what they're getting when it when it comes to information and do their own due diligence, challenge, trust, but verify. If Teach we don't do thing. that. Exactly. If we don't teach critical thinking, then we're not doing a service to our future generation. And 
if there's anything that can teach you critical thinking, it is 3D printing. It is absolutely 3D printing. Oh, if yeah. you've ever had something that just randomly doesn't work and you leave it off for the night and you turn it on the next day and you run the same damn code and it works, there's no value. And I know everybody on this call has been through that. Oh, I'm in pain. The Taz is currently <laughs> off because it is pissing me off and I've decided that it needs to sit in a corner and think about what it's done. I will turn it back on later this evening and I would bet a oh, non-trivial right. amount of money that it is going to work perfectly. Yep. It's the same damn code. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, but it does also like is... teach you how to investigate something and how to solve a problem oh, yeah. and stuff. Like how yeah. to like I'm working on the belt printer currently because I'm like I can't get it level, but like everyone else is leveling, and it was fine, and mine's just not. And I'm like, why? And you know, so I'm like investigating yeah. and like asking lots of people, and you know, you eventually I know I'll get there because I have with every other three D printing issue I've ever had. But yeah, it definitely, it definitely thing, does teach you. Know, you. you yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it might be um a Core X Y belt thing. One of my friends sent me a video, and I was like, that looks like it. Oh, where one's a little too loose. I'm thinking, yes. I've never yeah, had Core XY before, happen. and it's basically a Core XY system, kind of. Yeah. And I've never had that the before, so it's totally is. unfamiliar. So I think potentially that could be it. But we'll we'll find out. <laughs> we have, uh, we have our big-ass D-Bot, which is Core XY, and uh, that thing shakes like Michael J. Fox. I am still trying to deal with that. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a Parkinson's joke for anyone that didn't oh, get God. that. Um, oh, do we make oh, no. oh, <laughs> no. Hey, oh, no. it, it, you brought me on knowing that I make dumb jokes. All right. But uh, <laughs> I, I've got a local college and part of their uh, Florida Polytechnic and part of their capstone is they are going to be redesigning the Z axis, which should viably stiffen up the printer quite a bit. But one meter long, 20 by 40 aluminum extrusions. Lo and behold, they flex when you're yes. trying to move the printer Thank at 1,500 you. millimeters a second. Ooh, <laughs> it would never idea. reach that, surely. Would it? Who would, who would Once or twice. Have that idea? <laughs> and then wow. it broke. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Linear linear rails, direct drive. Uh, it runs a Titan Arrow, uh, but it runs mm. all linear rails. It runs uh, really tall NEMA 17 steppers running the absolute max current that we can run out of that duet. And we I like are how I'm building looking... it in my mind as you describe it. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, it, 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 it is, <laughs> yes, it is so... <laughs> that printer is so jank. It is the definition of jank. It is why we do not build our own 3D printers anymore. Because we're like, oh, let's just build a 16-inch 3D printer. A 16-inch cube, 400-millimeter cube. I'm like, but it's uh, only $65 to go to 800 millimeters on the Z. <laughs> F it. Let's do it. Without even yes. considering all the that other problems fine. that come from that. I think this is what most people do when they build a big printer. They're like, yes, we just we just extend them. And then they're like, oh, oh, <laughs> I think everyone's. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it, it's a spherical chicken in a vacuum. It's fine. Nothing, <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> what? What's inertia? That inertia pish posh. Isaac Newton Bradley didn't know shot. shit. <laughs> yeah i feel like but anyone that's what making is all about been there. <laughs> right. who's who, who's the youtuber that's make break repeat oh. who, who's the who's the youtuber that there's a youtuber that yeah. uses that that mantra i forget I've seen that. i don't watch it enough does sound, YouTube. it does sound familiar and now i'm like but that's basically what we do, right? We we make stuff, we break it, we make it, we break it. And eventually we get it to a point where it's living within inches of its life. And that's precisely where we want it to be. We will run these Prusas at like 135 millimeters a second on PETG, which is well at the 15 millimeters cubed uh, flow rate that the uh, V6 can handle. So what do you do? Crank the temps up, baby. You can go faster, hotter. Hotter. We Hot run PLA on the more <laughs> the, the the freaking uh more struder on the Taz, 280 degrees centigrade for PLA. Oh, what? At one millimeter thick layers at 40 millimeters a second, you need a ton of heat to melt the filament. Okay. Wow. You know, it's, it's also three millimeter filament. Oh, three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, it's it's also crappy three yeah. millimeter. But like, I mean, a great example. Let me see if I can grab it. Oh, I can. Get out Your here. arms are long enough. All right, got it. Like our, we have a custom 1.75 millimeter Titan Arrow tool head for the Taz oh. Six with an umbilical 
chalkboard because Taz and like the stock fan was garbage. So I replaced it with a hamburger fan knocked to a master race, but it's so big. It doesn't fit. So it's just held on there with zip ties and you know, yeah, yeah. it don't got to be pretty to be functional. That's what I tell myself every so morning. Oh, yeah. Dude, you yeah. got to stop saying mean things about yourself. It's not okay. Oh, come on. A little self-deprecating humor never hurt anybody. And my video is kind of rough. You need to just say out. You just went out. Back. There. Now Ooh. I'm better. Now I look better. <laughs> so, right. I, I know I can just toss that thing aside. Exactly but exactly uh, on time. Tell oh. us. What is Oh, we're fine. I don't I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> but I thought you What is what? up and I mean, I have stuff to go to, but Billy, it is nowhere near as important as being here and hanging out. It's a city oh, council meeting that I'm just sitting in on. If I'm a few minutes late, none of them are going to notice. I'll be the youngest person in the room by multiple decades. It's fine. And maybe they will notice. Uh, <laughs> They'll no, be like, oh, they're not going to notice. There's going to be some some weird kid that clearly needs a haircut uh, walking in. He's probably a vagrant, but that's okay. Hey, uh, I like your hair. I like your hair. Yeah, don't I, you I, I to, like the lawn. Like I just got to get rid of the saying mullet. nice things about ourselves, Grant. Do you want to start <laughs> Look, ourself? Pick up something nice you like about yourself. <laughs> see, you know, in business, they say that every business needs an attorney and a, an accountant. I believe that every business should have three things, an attorney, accountant, and most importantly, a therapist. Uh, <laughs> and that's why we are actually going to have a therapist on our podcast and talking about wow. mental health because everybody should take care of their own damn mental health, especially Very in this important. season. This is the holiday season. Yeah. Anyways, what's on the horizon I'm for for? I'm for me, yeah. uh, in 2020, not a damn thing, honestly. Oh, no, uh, I mean, um, 2020 no, no, no. is also why we need no. a therapist. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but in 2021, we are going to be launching the full rebrand for 3D Musketeers. So brand new website, brand new logos with actual marketing. People that used to work at Adobe and for Lockheed Martin and the marketing departments. Wow. Dang. They got nice furloughed. <laughs> <laughs> COVID doing something good for me. Uh, so we, 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 we've <laughs> locked him in, talent. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you know. Awesome. But uh, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be launching our learning management system, name TBD. Uh, we're going to keep this podcast going as long as I feel competent to do it. By the way, uh, learning management gonna... system, Grant, you know, that used to be my job for like years. I made learning. That was my thing. So if you need some people to make some learning. Let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I like money. We're using, we're using Clastra. Things. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah. Melanie, why? This is my problem. See, this is the one thing I have. that, that I, I have a bone to pick with makers. You all are, and everyone is so afraid of talking about themselves. I didn't know this about you. Really? I didn't know that you're the, the one. I didn't know that you've known me. That's no, been my job. I, I make learning. <laughs> Never knew this. I only recently found out that you do all your own graphic design. I'm like, oh shit, she does good work. I gotta hire her. <laughs> yeah. uh, now I just gotta. I, I actually, I want you to redo our thumbnail for YouTube. So that's gonna be something that we'll be working mm. on shortly. Mm. But uh, you know, if makers talked more about not only themselves but their their uh, their surroundings, right? Tad, his half brother Thomas worked on the InSight spacecraft for its marketing. Like, you know, the one that's traveling at damn near the speed of light through space. <laughs> and yeah. Tad has worked with us for almost three years and has never mentioned the fact that his brother, half-brother, is a graphic designer and knows marketing. I'm like, Tad, I <laughs> love you to death. I am not mad. I am disappointed. <laughs> you, and to this day, I give him shit about it because he deserves it. <laughs> we could have been so much better off this year if we had good marketing. The Aww. one thing I'm truly bad at is tooting my own horn, which given the fact that we've been talking for a little over an hour, you may not know that. <laughs> But I'm really bad when I have to write a post because I'm so much better in person because my emotion, my passion, you don't get that over a tweet. You don't get that over Very Instagram. And you just gotta I don't find like, your flow, I reckon. You just got to find the way you can be yourself like, and show that passion. This whole like selfie thing. I hate that shit. <laughs> oh, Why can't man, people just so buy, buy my stuff because it's cool? Why do I have to prove that it's cool? <laughs> You should just trust me. That's a big mood. That's a big mood right there. <laughs> yes, it is I'm a big sorry. mood. 
I'm still slightly disappointed you didn't do the Tim Curry voice when you said in space. So I, I like. Oh sh! You might be. I was say I, missed you might opportunities. Be <laughs> Inside, in space. Billy, add a reverb to that in post. I don't know how to do that. Uh, I don't know how to do it either. That's why I'm telling you to do it. Okay. Uh, You're no. the one recording the audio. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I heard it in my. Head. I heard it in my head. Okay, that, that, that truly that's what matters. And, you know, this is, we're characters, right? Everyone inside of 3D Musketeers, we're all characters. And the fact that I have a business guy, an engineer, and a graphic designer as the three hosts of our podcast should tell you, we're kind of weird. We were supposed to have a guest, and they just didn't show up. So... We said, screw it. Let's just do the SEO of all SEO episodes. We answered like the top 3D printing questions on Google. And Very smart. That's a good right idea. from the beginning, I said, it. this episode is all about us getting good SEO. So <laughs> if you don't want to know about some of the dumb questions people ask on Google, just click off now. Hey, I'm you curious are. now. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, I wonder what they, how do I level my bed? Except they won't be asking that. They'll be like, why is my print failing? And it'll be because you uh, I will tell you bed. verbatim. <laughs> One of the questions is, what is 3D printing examples? And then, uh, is is 3D printing real? Those are two actual top questions on Google about 3D printing. Amazing. To be fair, one, one of those is legit. Well, yeah. When, uh, well, what is 3D printing examples? That's not proper that, grammar. That's not legit. Google doesn't uh, care about grammar. And then they never put grammar in Google. It's really printing real. <laughs> but see, we're the type of people I that we asked that. Too, Thomas asked the question. We all said no, and we ignored it and moved on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I am, I am waiting for the day. I, I just wake up, and it was all a fever dream. So yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, part of me wants imagine. it to be because... I'm so tired of Billy Bob calling me, wanting me to 3D print him a gun. That'd be great uh, if we got less calls about that. Just but move I, to Australia. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting because, no, I actually like guns, but I don't <laughs> oh want God. to print them for other people because that's illegal. Gotcha. But, uh, you know, we are a company that makes so many awesome things. And the one downside is we can't talk about them because 95% of what we do is protected under NDA. And the 5% that isn't is not always that cool. Like this that's is a fanny pack thing. system that holds an oxygen tank. It's not cool. It's kind the of cool. only people that will find this cool are people that don't use social media. You know, Grant, <laughs> Grant, there is a lesson I learned very long ago on Reddit. And that's, it is, you might not necessarily find it cool, but other people might. So just throw it out there. Like seriously, with social this media, is why, why if you do people. it, put it out there. Because some people, like it It always was absolutely bewildering to me what posts took off and what didn't. Yeah. Because sometimes I just throw something together in an afternoon, think, ah, whatever, I'll show some people. And it would hit the front page. And then other times you put weeks of effort into something and think it's really awesome and nothing. So literally, My, don't oh, trust your judgment. Just throw it out My there and see what experience. happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, My just put it out experience. there. And I don't want to get yeah. downvoted to hell. I'm still known as one of the OGs in the 3D printing subreddit. <laughs> you I was only in that well surviving ones. Building. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, all most of the other OGs are gone. I'm one of the yeah. few professionals that are still there because everyone's gotten tired of of all the BS that's happening. Yeah. But you know, every now and then when I'm tired and can't sleep, I'll fire up Reddit, uh, search by uh, search by new in the 3D printing subreddit and just answer all the why doesn't my Ender three work questions. Yeah. And the answer why is because you. So it, the answer of why your Ender three doesn't work is because you're cheap and decided that your time is not valuable. That is why your Ender three doesn't work. It is not because you have the wrong settings. It's because you have decided that your time is worthless and that you want to buy something that is cheap. And I understand that some people can only afford so much. And don't get me wrong. I started out with Wanhao Duplicator i3s. And if anyone knows about those printers, hot garbage barely starts to describe them. <laughs> but it got us moving, right? Now, for $400, you can get a Prusa Mini. There is no reason you shouldn't. There is no, I don't even own one. Billy, I think our minis are going to come roughly at the same time. I ordered four. I've never, uh, okay, I did actually use one uh, on Friday because Brad has one, but he has the original Minda sensor, so it's kind of meh. Uh, but, you know, uh, the extrusion stuff that we were going through on stream, I was helping him with before I had to leave so I could get home and then join the live stream. I got home about five minutes before the before that hangout started. 
because I was at Brad's house. I said, Brad, just talk about it when you're in the the the, the chat. We gotta go. Um, and but I think that's what I, I, I love. It's such an important message. Is um like yeah, your time is worth money, and and I think also to your emotional energy is worth money. So like I I I set up this craft room relatively recently, and I did spend quite <laughs> a lot of money on shelves and boxes and just setting it up, and. I actually, I spent so many years getting the cheapest things I could, making it work on the lowest budget yep. I could, blah, 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 and spending all my money on supplies for, for making. But I really think, I, and I, I almost think I want to make a video on how to set up a craft room, but I think one of the important messages in that would be your emotional energy and your time is worth money. And so a storage system that works for you is as important as materials and stuff. It is worth That's the, saving the money and getting something yep. that actually helps you and helps your workflow. Because now my room stays tidy and never in my life have I not had to wade through my craft supplies. <laughs> like, you know? And like just that kind of stuff. I have to do that, stuff. but you know. Yeah, but like but like that kind I, of stuff is worth money. And just like you said, the, the right tools are worth money and and your time is worth money and your emotional energy. It's investing is worth in yourself. Money. Yeah, it is. And you That's what it. owning a business has taught me. That my time has value to it. And if I'm lucky, people pay their bills on time. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all that owning a business has taught me. Yeah. Um, no, no, it, it, yeah. it's taught me so much more. But the most valuable lesson, I think, is that my time has value to it. And because, look, I had my latest head injury because I didn't value my time. I worked for almost three days straight. I uh, lost blood pressure and I passed out and I hit a cabinet, countertop, countertop again. The floor jumped back up, passed out again, hit the floor again. Uh, and when I came to, I had a uh, blood pressure of like, 35 over 40. I went through this in our most recent episode of uh, the Make You Awesome podcast. It's just uh, but the fact that you said the latest. How does your girlfriend that... feel about this? <laughs> she was not with me at the time. How did she feel about it after the fact? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we didn't know each other back then. We met dancing. Oh. The way that we met is is fun. We so we cute. she she's it. she's been a dancer for many years, and uh, I, I decided that you know. I come from a long line of white men that dance like white men. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you probably don't have this problem. Um, and I decided that I wanted to change that. <laughs> uh, and so we, we actually met um, swing dancing. So jazz, swing. I was literally just going to say, was it Lindy Hop? <laughs> it, I love Lindy Hop. And for all the single men and women out there, if you would like to meet people that are geeks like you and you'd like to learn how to dance, go find your local swing dancing scene. Make sure you add dancing. Otherwise, the swing you might find may not be the swing you're looking for. Uh, also, just like I am also a horologist, <laughs> but that has nothing to do with women. It's called. There's never enough men. There's never enough men at those things either. So like, there aren't. Can, yeah. And I There's will tell you, women looking for dance partners. And a lot of them are very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them are very attractive. And you, and even if you suck, I'm still not very good. Um, but there are people there, like you know, follows traditionally are female roles, which I don't disagree with. I have uh, danced with many women as a as a follow myself and they were leading and it's a lot of fun i've danced with guys uh jesse who was on uh on the one of the recent hangouts i know him from dancing and he and i dance together a lot because he's considerably larger than me so it's what so i dance with him to see what it feels like to get thrown around of how amateurs are when they don't understand that you can't put all of your body weight into a swing out but, uh, you know, it, it, I will tell you, swing dancing and jazz dancing, you will never find a group of geeks like that. They are all engineers. They're computer programmers, mechanical, electrical, at least locally. They're all engineers. My girlfriend has danced out in Colorado. She danced with a gentleman who uh, published one of the world renowning papers regarding, uh, I think it was organs from HIV patients or uh, blood transfusion, something regarding HIV. And I can't think about oh, it. Wow. I, I forget what it was, but she was like starstruck by this gentleman. And I'm like, this is awesome. You're getting this opportunity to talk to someone for a few minutes about this. It was a, you, Bill Nye's a swing dancer. Come on. <laughs> Do you need swing more of a sales pitch than if, that? If, if, if you don't, 
if you don't, if that didn't just convince you, then don't even bother trying because nothing's going to convince you. No, I'm, but, I'm, uh, I'm happy to back you up on this. I'm happy to back you up. The, there were three other people at my local uh, swing dancing arena thingy that were 3D printers. And, uh, yeah. you know, you, I, I was clearly the the oldest one in the group. You know, I've been doing it for considerably, like as one of them was doing it in, in the, the amount of months that I've been doing it in years. So yeah. considerably more experience. But to see what they're doing and how they're doing it, it was always really cool, of course. I have not danced all year because of COVID and I herniated two discs in my back in April. So um, there's so that. Yourself, man. Not okay. You know, be nice to your bodies. But, uh, yeah. you know, making, and look, I, I'm literally right here is my MRI disc. Oh, okay, are you going to print? It. There's my MRI disc. Get a, is there a DICOM data on there? Are you going to print it? It is. Yes. But I don't know how. And I'm trying to learn because <laughs> think of all the good jokes that I can make if I hand somebody my spine. You should come to the Oceania Women in 3D Printing meetup because there are some ladies on there that... Billy, I am clearly not their target market. No, anyone can come to a Women in 3D <laughs> Printing meetup. That, that's the whole thing. That's why I became an ambassador because everyone is welcome. You don't have to send be a me lady. the info. I would love to. We'll I mean, because that. that, oh, that's, that's so lovely. <laughs> it would just be cool, right? Because I can make really stupid jokes when someone is trying to like haggle me down. I'm like, look, I will just give you my spine. <laughs> I look, if this is what you're asking for here, you can have it. Think of it. Oh, Think of how funny this oh. is. And I can give them out as like <laughs> wedding, as like wedding party gifts, you know, because the whole. <laughs> You're just spine practicing for, a... for being a dad. This is like yes, <laughs> dad yes. practice. This, this whole maker thing is just practicing all the good dad jokes. All the yep. just, all the memes that we 3D printed is excessive. The um all the sandstone memes that you see out there, we did them. Sad Keanu, that was us. Now yep. we didn't design it. We were the ones that 3D printed it. So, uh, Shapeways contracted us to do the 3d printing spoiler oh, wow. alert shapeways does very little of their own 3d printing it's all contracted out to other companies huh. um because that's the smart way to do business is that not to is maintain so millions of dollars of machinery yourself you should uh you know outsource it you find people that are willing to work for next to nothing and you pay them next to nothing to do it um so yes we have printed the sad keanu uh we did drake although we actually did scan drake and drake's dad uh, Drake's dad is funny. Dennis is his name. Hmm. But uh, yeah, you know, it, 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 interesting people throughout the years. And we don't do a lot of celebrities anymore. I mean, we did everyone from Blackish, every single cast and crew member from Blackish. Uh, it, 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 it's been a fun journey. And as much as the celebrities and everything was fun and the money was pretty decent, boy, they were a pain in the ass to work with. And I much <laughs> prefer to work with people who have an idea, they're not sure how to get it off the ground, and they need someone to kind of hold their hand. What we say is the first meeting is on the house, right? It, it, it's like that first bump of Coke is on the house because you know you're coming back. You know, first one, <laughs> second one's going to cost you. And uh, by and large, people will come back to us because this is what we do. We are makers helping makers, and it doesn't matter what you're making. I mean, geez whether you're doing ball joint dolls which is a recent client that we've been working with or you're trying to fix a statue at your church or you know you're an inventor that's trying to just take your idea and make it real you are a maker no matter what you do you're a maker whether you're making money or you're making stuff you're making something yeah and yeah I, yeah <laughs> and now that being geeky and being a nerd is kind of cool. I'm all for it. I'm all for it, which yeah. kind of allows me to uh, spread my wings a little bit. Now, if I just wasn't so shy, I know, shocking. He's shy. Ah! Yes, believe it or not, I am. <laughs> Zoom is uh, different. <laughs> I am. I'm an extroverted introvert, according to Myers Briggs. Uh, I know. I know. I am. Yeah, I'm that. That as well. 
Yeah. One of my Put main me, fears uh, about uh, going to Murph when I was going to be going to Murph this year was like, what if I just get totally overwhelmed? Oh, see, <laughs> I, need I would to run away too. <laughs> I would do so well at like a Murph or something like that. I can't leave the damn business to go to things. That's the tough part. So, right. you know, in 2021, we're looking to, you know, really automate a lot more of that process. I, I I'm trying. The hit by a bus problem is real for a lot of us, right? You know, if, if Billy was to all of a sudden not come home, that would be a problem. There's nobody that could take your place. There's no yes. one that could continue the company. Why would you make me think about this terrible thing? <laughs> but this is something that we all need to think about as makers, because if you are no. doing something... <laughs> no, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Right. If you are doing something that is picking up volume, picking up steam and becoming popular, you God, I hit my microphone. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're fine. It's not that uh, bad. Okay, good. Uh, if, if you are someone that's doing something that's picking up steam, you have to make sure that you have a second in command or a way that someone else, whether it's inside of your team or not, can pick up where you left off in the event that you become incapacitated. I'm at a point where I might need back surgery. That's 10 days in a hospital. Now, as much as I will sneak a computer into a hospital to continue to do my business, they're not going to let me sneak a 3D printer in. There's no way I can get one of those in. You need more Octoprint. And, and, <laughs> I and you have to babysit them. I don't use Octoprint because the printers are literally less than six feet from me. I can just go over well, and go, click, Yeah, click. when you're in arms to reach, it doesn't make too much sense. But if you're in hospital, I mean, but you shouldn't this print is true. without people being there anyway. That's a bad thing. You say. shouldn't, <laughs> even though we, we all do it. <laughs> you're right. Your, your, your logic is sound, but I still don't want to think about Billy not <laughs> <laughs> oh look, I don't look, I don't either. But it's it, it's a matter of fact that we all have to think about it, you know. I, it, it, but <laughs> like, no, right, it's I'll, not I'll, happening. <laughs> look, Bill, Billy's not going anywhere. Okay, with COVID, <laughs> none of us are going anywhere anytime soon. So, Grant, and, we uh, have you know, we have like more than five minutes into your next meeting. So, I don't. Care. Where can people find you? <laughs> And what communities yes. do you hang out in? <laughs> oh, you guys can find me uh, at 3dmusketeers.com. Uh, we're at 3D Musketeers on Instagram and Facebook, at 3D underscore Musketeers on Twitter because someone got to that before I did, bastards. Uh, we have the Making Awesome podcast, so you can find us there. Although, if you're looking for the podcast, you can just go to our website. We have a whole little thing for the podcast there. I hang out on Reddit whenever I get a chance because... You know, free time. What the hell's that? Apparently. Not much. Uh, I'm logging about three to four hours a night of, you know, sleep. Uh, I'm on Billy's Discord. You can find me there. Uh, Billy, if you want to... Well, I guess I'm, I'm under 3D Musketeers in your Discord, right? I'm not under my username. I think, yeah, I yeah, think I I've changed my name. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm on 3D Musketeers most places. So, um, oh, And Reddit, I I'm not going to give away my Reddit handle. You'll find it eventually. <laughs> I, I have a very important question. What's up? Can we be friends? Totally. <laughs> totally. I've been trying to reach out to you. You just, you know, don't respond to Discord. Oh, Faye. no. Don't. Oh, <laughs> Faye, yeah. <laughs> She's never on Discord. Yeah. That's, that's, I'll that's call it out. Sorry. That's, that's no, you gotta, totally... You gotta a... get me on Twitter. You gotta get yeah, me on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter. See, and Twitter's like I'm one sorry. of... Because, because of the presidential <laughs> election, I, like, nope, um, nope. Nope, 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 nope. And now, no, now that we're learning how to, be, how to be a Discord person, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, I will do my best to, to be on Twitter and I'm going to do my best to start posting more of what we're doing. Too. I'm very huh? old. So like I, I do, I have email and stuff too because I'm very well, I don't know your email. Uh, oh, I guess I do know it because I set up this call. <laughs> I have your email. I'll figure it out. Yes. See, th this you're, is... you're very cool and i'm very glad that i got the opportunity to know you a bit better because i'm kind of like well dang dang grant's cool so yeah everybody's got a story to tell and everybody's story is unique and that's coming from someone who is an identical twin everybody's story is unique and that's why I'm, I'm so glad that you're doing this podcast billy because there are so many makers that don't get the recognition that they deserve and there are too many that get more recognition than they deserve. Yeah, I I eh? I just have so many awesome no. friends who do so many cool things and I just I just wanted to 
hang out with them and also give them a chance to show off really i just think there's so much out there and yeah i just feel so honored and blessed to know them and be a little bit apart in their worlds and yeah i just want to hang out really <laughs> well, I, I, i'm glad to have known you for all these years now and i'm, I'm excited to watch you grow into uh 3d printing stardom uh you are quickly becoming uh, kind of a, a known face in the industry. So anyone out there that's listening to this podcast, you better be watching out for all three of us, but especially Billy. She is making okay. oh freaking God. moves. <laughs> Yay, look, we're all shitty at talking about ourselves. So let someone else do it for you that's passionate, okay? <laughs> all right, this is, this is what it's all about. I greatly well, appreciate you. the time. <laughs> And right. I think we hit maybe two of the questions. So I don't know. We did maybe, good. Maybe, we maybe. Did good. <laughs> yeah, hey, I mean, if you we want me back again, I'm order. always happy to come back. Awesome. That, that would be lovely. <laughs> Whenever you have a guest that, or you can't book a guest, please give me a call. This is, awesome. this is fun. We, we, we can talk about whatever the hell you want. I, I don't, you know, we, we can talk about some of the weird stuff we've done. Which we didn't even get into today. I yes, I'm not sure how. I know you know about. Some I know of it. some. I'm not sure whether you can. Can you? That would be cool though. No, okay. I didn't I, think I, so. I, I can talk. I can talk about it somewhat, but because it's so polarizing for some people, uh, we we don't market. Even though that's literally some of the things we can market, um, it's just not stuff that we do because there's there's no good way to get business to business out of it like you know working with other businesses when Faye you're talking, know about, what talking about she's just like mm. yeah adult <laughs> things Faye. oh, oh okay uh, yeah which is it, <laughs> I, really, I understand it, those waters i yes i'm NBD. still learning to navigate yeah doing it, adult it, things it, and it, non-adult things because it seems to just blow people's minds and they don't know how to handle it so we'll, we'll, i'm still yeah. working that one out <laughs> yep but you know that's that's what this industry is all about and this industry is still in its infancy i laugh every time someone says well i just wish it worked like my 2d printer no this is what 2d printers were like back in the 70s and the 80s okay this is what computers were like back then this is not you know you, you you draw it out on your iPhone and then your 3D printer made by Apple makes it. No, this is something that you need to have time. It's great gift for kids. It's a bad gift for new parents. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. And 3D printers are like children. And unfortunately, some of them need to be uh, realigned <laughs> every now and then. Discipline. <laughs> Dis but see, oh, real dear. realigning works in a couple Faith of like, ways, no. all right? <laughs> but yes, discipline. Sometimes you got to go tell it. The task is in timeout, okay? It's in timeout. It recently got a Victoria sticker. It recently got one of the new 3D Musketeer stickers. But, you know, now that it's looking pretty, it's getting all prissy on me. So it needs to sit and Victoria. think about what it's done <laughs> or what it's not doing. Yes, Victoria. Victoria. Vict and yes, Faye, if you noticed the digital assistant that scheduled this, her name is Victoria. It's a joke because that's my cat's name. <laughs> a little Easter egg about our company. You're going to see some cool things with this cat coming out. She is our director of marketing for a reason. It's the only successful oh, marketing things that we had was I'm with so the cat. Excited. Yeah, the, cats, the cat is awesome. Cats are great. Dogs are great. And I'm glad that... All, both of the two big maker communities that I'm a part of have direct channels for pets. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is it's so lovely even. to me. <laughs> is it is. But it, it was a pleasure hanging out with you guys. Thank I would you. love Thank to do this more sorry. often. Awesome. Uh, yeah, you should have this me on was your a show. lot of fun. And Faye, put us on yes. your show. And see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you on, Billy. And then the next week we'll have Faye on. I get two episodes. Out. Hell That's... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, plan. we will see you then. And thank you so much. This has been great. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I am loving making this series. And if you are too, please support me on Patreon so I can keep making more. Top supporters will appear in this list of legends. And the topmost supporter gets a special shout out. So thank you, Loyal Moses. You are absolutely wonderful. I know you don't only support me, but so many others in the community and you're awesome for it. Thank you. You can meet another maker here and here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like. If you want to catch up with any of us, all our socials are in the description below. See you later.